my name is Susan Nicastro. I represent Ward 4 on the Brockton City Council. This is my show. It's called Facts on 4, the longest 10 minutes of my month, without a doubt. And today on Facts on 4, I'm going to be briefly discussing some trending topics. And these are issues and concerns that come up and are mentioned to me as I'm out and about in Brockton doing my errands, attending events. Um, things that I, I think you would be interested in because other constituents are, okay? And at this time, I want to begin by thanking Brockton Community Access, and in particular, Aaron Tebow, for waiting for me. I always show up at these, at these recording sessions late because I'm so nervous about doing it, for being so patient with me. A very patient man, Aaron is. Thank you very much, Brockton Cable Access and Aaron Tebow. So, trending topics as I go about around Ward 4 uh, this month. Well, the first one is, where is recreational marijuana at right now since the city council passed two ordinances that govern it in the city of Brockton? Well, I learned from the website of the Cannabis Control Commission that there are 27 applications pending to cite recreational marijuana establishments in Plymouth County, and they're pending before the Cannabis Control Commission, the state commission in Boston. Um, I learned from the newspaper that since last fall, Mayor Bill Carpenter has signed 12 host community agreements for the city of Brockton. 10 of them have been for retail marijuana establishments, and two of them have been for cultivation businesses. Um, so far, only one has been uh, provisionally licensed, and that was in good health. It's located on West Chestnut Street in Brockton. They've had a license for several years to, to uh, provide medical marijuana cultivation and retail sales. I should say sales to people with medical marijuana cards. Um, the host agreements, we had, we at the city council, had quite a time obtaining copies of those that Mayor Carpenter had signed. We finally received them by email on February 26th. It's about 122 pages of, of reading. I'm still reviewing them all, but um, I know that the host community agreements don't include venues. So despite people asking me all the time, I don't know where any mar marijuana places will be cited in Ward 4 yet. I'm not aware of any yet. This is a new industry in our state as well as in our city. And I'm very interested in getting some perspectives on this. And I think a lot of my constituents are too. So I want to invite you to a lecture that's going to be held sponsored by the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association. It's called A Conversation with Andrea Cabral. It's going to take place on May 8th at 6.30 at Messiah Baptist Church, 80 Legion Parkway here in Brockton. Um, Andrea Cabral is a former Suffolk County Sheriff and Assistant District Attorney, and she's now involved in a recreational marijuana company in the Boston area. And she's going to be talking about her ideas and what her goals are um, for this business in, in Boston and what she thinks we should be looking for and the questions she should be asking. So May 8th, 6.30, a conversation with Andrea Cabral at Messiah Baptist Church. Try to get there. I think you'll learn a lot. I, I know I'm planning to attend as well. And we want to thank the Frederick, Frederick Douglass Association for making these arrangements. So another trending topic as I'm out and about is... Uh, troubling recent community or criminal activity in Ward 4. Um, on the weekend of March 15th and 16th, there were three criminal incidents that were very troubling to me and that I'm actively monitoring. Um, on Friday, March 15th, local and state police raided um, at an auto repair business on Clinton Street. It's right across the street from the Gilmore School, and it took place, this raid, as children were walking home from school. I'm awaiting the resulting report. I'm keeping in touch with the police on this, but I'm very concerned that this all happened during the school day or as the school was letting out. Then on Saturday, March 16th, there were houses and cars near the intersection of Main and Grand Street that were hit by, by uh, gunfire. 
Um, and later that same evening, a young local young man's body was found um, uh, on the rear of, of South Main Street, and another injured young man was found at the hospital. Um, terrible, terrible. Uh, I'm waiting to hear what will happen with this. I want to reassure residents in that area and in all of uh, the city that the Brockton police are working actively on this. They will find out who was behind this, these terrible acts. And lastly, on Saturday morning, March 16th, three young adults were found in a car with Tennessee plates um, that, that was um, filled with, with guns in the trunk. A, a smart resident noticed these young men and called it into the police, and the police quickly responded. This week, there was a dangerousness hearing at which the, these young men were denied bail, and they're going to be kept in custody um, until their trial on, on these serious offenses. Um, again, the Brockton Police, State Police, and in the case of these young men with the Tennessee plates, Federal agents are monitoring this. They're investigating it. We will get to the bottom of why this happened. Allegedly, these young men were bringing these guns to Brockton to sell them, which is just terrible. But I want to commend the resident who came forward and called to report this. You know, we depend on resident cooperation in these matters. So if you see something, please say something. Uh, please call the Brockton police with tips or with information about what's happening as you drive by or in your neck of the woods. Thank you. Um, I'm Susan DeCastro. I'm the Ward 4 City Councilor. You can call me about any of these um, incidents, these issues, at 508-897-1314. You can email me at snicastro, S-N-I-C-A-S-T-R-O, at cobma.us. Finally, a third trending topic is uh, it's called, it's a pending ordinance. It's called the Brockton United Ordinance. And it's stated, it's an ordinance that was submitted by two of our city council members, and it's currently being vetted out by the ordinance committee of the city council. And its stated purpose is to create unity among residents of Brockton, to foster an environment in which all living here feel safe about going to the police department to report crimes, whether they're a witness to it or a victim of it. Um, and, and how it's supposed to work is it's supposed to constrain Brockton police from giving federal immigration authorities information on persons, either accused of a crime or reporting crime, to prevent uh, federal immigration authorities from taking action against them. Um, it's also intended to constrain Brockton public schools from st seeking student or parent information on their immigration or citizenship status. The City Council Ordinance Committee has already met twice about this proposed ordinance. Um, and they're going to be meeting again about it this Wednesday, April 3rd, at 6 o'clock in the City Council Chambers on the second floor of City Hall. I support this idea conceptually. I want to foster safety. I want to foster cooperation by all city residents with public safety officials. Now, whether the Ordinance Committee can fashion this ordinance so that it achieves this purpose while complying with federal laws remains to be seen. And so I, I've gotten several calls about this, and people have mentioned this in passing. If you're interested in this important issue to our city, Join us at the next Ordinance Committee meeting on Wednesday, April 3rd at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers on the second floor of City Hall. So those are my three trending topics. I'll be back in a few weeks with another edition of Facts on Four. I'm Susan DeCastro, the Ward 4 City Councilor. You can reach me by telephone at 508-897-1314 or email me at snicastro at cobma.us. Thanks for watching. Take care.